Hey guys, it's Ashley, and today I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I've read so far in 2021, as well as my top five favorites so far this year. I do this video every year where I just give you a complete roundabout wrap up of everything that I've read so far in the first half of the year, and that's that's pretty much it. It's kind of self-explanatory. So uh, this is for all of you who don't like to watch individual wrap-ups. You can just watch it all at once at double speed and be able to you know, know what I read. Before we get into the video though, I am so excited to let you guys know that this video is once again being sponsored by Karma. So Karma is a free app and Google Chrome extension that ensures you never miss a price drop or a coupon code on any of your favorite items. I'm gonna have a link in the description down below if you guys wanna learn more and check it out because I honestly use them every time I go online to shop now and it's just literally become second nature to just, you know, log on and to save things to my, you know, list and things like that. So pretty recently Karma actually sent me a notification and I was able to get this beautiful UK cover of Spin the Dawn for a couple of bucks cheaper than it is usually listed as. It is so pretty. Like, look at how stunning this UK cover is, you guys. I cannot. And I might have also ordered the UK cover of Unraveled the Dusk as well, but it's just not here yet. So to get started, all you have to do is download the free Google Chrome extension on your computer. You can visit any of your favorite stores online and save anything that you're thinking about buying. And you can get notifications via email or mobile push when an item you've saved goes on sale, has a relevant coupon, or comes back in stock. You can actually organize everything that you save into very easy to understand lists so that if you're looking for something specific or you just have a ton of crap that you've saved on there like I do, you can quickly find what you need. And when you're checking out, Karma will scan the entire internet for relevant coupon codes that you can use so that you can make sure you're getting the best discount on whatever you're buying. But this is a feature for only the computer version of the Google Chrome extension, so make sure you're using your computer when you check out if you want to use the coupon codes. And one of the best things about Karma so that you can actually earn cash back via PayPal when you shop with select retail partners. So if you're a shopaholic like me and you really need something to keep you in line, check out the link in my description down below where you can download Karma on your phone and your computer and you can start saving money. It is a godsend. I'm telling you. And thank you so, so, so much to Karma for sponsoring this video and for working with me once again. And now, without further ado, let us talk about all of the books that I've read so far this year. Some of these I'll be doing like rapid fire reviews and some of them I will spend a bit more time on. So let's do this. So according to my Goodreads, I've read 37 books so far this year. Uh, that doesn't count any of the Demon Slayer manga that I've read because I didn't record that, but it does include the fence graphic novels. So it's kind of wishy-washy as to like exactly how many books I've read but we're just gonna go with 37. Seems like a good enough number. So the first thing I actually did this year, technically last year, but I counted the books toward this year, was finish the Mistborn trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. I read The Well of Ascension and The Hero of Ages this year and absolutely loved them. They were amazing and it was an incredible end to a series. Granted, I think I mentioned this in one of my videos that I wasn't the biggest fan of the ending exactly, but the way that we led up to the ending, all of the action, all of the twists and turns and reveals, they were just so, so incredible to me and if you have not read the Mistborn trilogy I would highly recommend if you are a fantasy lover or you're just getting into it this is such a good series it's so complex and interesting and it just makes me want to read all of Brandon Sanderson's work now so uh, highly recommend they were so good so then I read Lore by Alexandra Bracken which is her newest release and has to do with Greek mythology it's all about this sort of event called the Aegon that happens every seven years where the gods of Olympus who betrayed Zeus are cast down as mortals and they have to fight for their lives. Otherwise, you know, whoever kills them will get their powers and then will ascend as that new god. So we follow this character named Lore who has kind of given up on the Aegon. You know, bad things happened to her the last time and she wants nothing to do with it. But one day the goddess Athena, you know, stumbles onto her doorstep bleeding and dying and she has to, you know, get herself back in in order to save her and figure out how to stop this horrible thing once and for all. It was a really good book. Granted, some of the flashbacks were a little confusing to read in terms of, you know, the timeline of the story and things like that, but it was a really good story. I loved the twist on Greek mythology, and I think that if you are into Greek mythology as well, then this is a great one to add to your TBR. If you like YA, if you like fantasy, I say do it. It was a really good really good time. So then I read my first slight disappointment of the year and that was Fire by Kristen Kishore. This is the second book in the Graceling trilogy, or not trilogy, the Graceling Realm series is what I meant to call it, but it doesn't follow any of the same characters from the first book. Instead of following Katza and Poe, we follow this girl named Fire who is a human version of a monster. It's kind of like a very different world than the Graceling Realm, but it coexists within the same world. They're kind of like separate countries or 
kingdoms in a way. It's, it's kind of confusing. Essentially, Fire is this human monster and she's very like attractive and seductive. So like people see her and they go into like a lust filled rage and they need to have her or they need to kill her or weird stuff that's happening that just kind of made me like, this is odd. I think I mentioned this when I originally read this book, but the one thing that kept me reading was the romance between Fire and Prince Brigand. Otherwise, there wasn't really anything tying me to this story, and I very easily would have given up on it midway through. So the next book that I read was City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty, but I'm also going to include the other two books in this series here as well, because I did end up reading the entire trilogy this year, and Oh my god, one of my favorite series of all time. I absolutely loved this adventurous Middle Eastern fantasy romp. It is so good. Oh my god. In this story, we follow two and eventually three different main characters. We have Nari, who is a street thief urchin and finds out that she's actually related to these very powerful beings and gets, you know, sent to Devabad, which is this magical city, and, you know, all of this stuff happens. But then we also follow Prince Ali, who is, you know, a prince with a soft heart and wants, you know, the good for his people, but he also wants to be true to his family who he loves, so he struggles with that. And then you also follow Dara, who is an ancient warrior who goes through his own crap, and oh, oh my god. If you want a story where characters that you love will go through so many trials and tribulations and horrible things, read this book. Read this story. It's so good and it makes you want to cry by the end, and it's just... I have no other words. It's wonderful and horrible at the same time, and I love it. So the next book I read was The Infinity Courts by Akemi Don Bowman, and this was an arc that I received and decided to read before its release date, and it was an okay story. I wasn't the biggest fan of it, but I also didn't absolutely hate it. The story is kind of like a different take on what is the afterlife. So in the real world, there is this AI called Ophelia, which is kind of similar to Siri, which is what we have now, obviously, with Apple, um, Apple devices is what I mean. And essentially, Ophelia has found a way to to take over the afterlife and turn it into something that is just not good. And so we follow this one character who ends up dying at the beginning of the book and gets sent to the afterlife and has to sort of fight in this war between, you know, Ophelia and taking her down and all, all this weird stuff. It was definitely an interesting take on a story like this, but all in all, like I wasn't too crazy about the writing or the characters and it sort of fell a bit flat for me. And then I read The Demon King by Cinta Williams Trima, which is the first book in the Seven Realms series and I kind of liked it. I had a bit of an issue with the way that the plot seemed to feel like it was like six different subplots that tied itself together rather than a single plot that either of these characters really followed. I liked the characters for the most part. I had a couple of issues with Han who is the male main character who we follow. He had a past of being like this thief and this gang leader or something but had given up on that to protect his family and he wears these like silver cuffs that he's never been able to take off but have kind of just like grown with him as he's gotten older. And then we also follow the princess Raysa, I believe is her name. She's just kind of like your typical, you know, badass princess who wants good things for the kingdom, but you know, doesn't understand why everybody else is so horrible and bad. Yeah, I think if the plot had been more of like a singular, you know, uh, goal between the two characters, then like it would have made more sense. But instead it just felt like a million things were weaving themselves together and I was just kind of left a bit confused. But like I said, when I first read this story, I would be interested in continuing and to see where the story goes, especially because some of you said that the books get really good. So then at this point during the year, I kind of branched off from my fantasy reading and I focused more so on romance contemporary. So I ended up reading, hang on, let me grab them from my pile down here. I ended up reading Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. This is a uh, romance graphic novel series following two boys in England. It is so amazing and so heartwarming and just so touching. I loved it so much. It makes you so happy and it really warms your heart while you're reading it. But eventually as the story goes on, we do start to delve into a bit more like uh, serious topics and more heavier topics. So I really appreciate that because it's not just your typical like you know oh this gives me you know the gooey mushy feelings of love and romance kind of story like we actually do talk about serious things in these books which I love and appreciate so much if you haven't read Heartstopper yet and you really you know love romance I just highly recommend it's so good and people rave about it for a reason and if that wasn't enough to get you to read it it's actually being made into a Netflix TV show and the cast looks 
wonderful. So I'm so excited. Then we have A Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow by Laura Taylor Namey. This is a super cute rom-com romance story about this girl named Lila who is living in Miami and her grandmother passes away and to deal with her grief and to help her cope her parents send her off to England to live with their family friends or their their aunt. I, I can't remember exactly who it is for the summer. She ends up meeting a boy and a group of friends and she falls in love and things happen and it's so wonderful. I love it. Some of my favorite things about this story were Orion, who is the love interest. He works at a tea shop and he is just everything that I want in a boy. And also uh, Lila herself is just really strong-willed and, you know, hard-headed and knows what she wants. But, you know, all of the baking that she does in this book, ugh, it made me so hungry and it made me want to bake my own stuff. It just... Ugh, I love it. I realized that I read a lot of like series this month, but like a lot of completed series. Like I completed the Mistborn trilogy, I completed the Devabad trilogy, including the Brown Sisters trilogy. I read completely uh, this year, which is kind of crazy to me that I've read all of these books this year. <laughs> if you're unaware, the Brown Sisters trilogy basically revolves around the three Brown Sisters, Chloe, Danny, and Eve, and each book follows their own love story. They are such great adult romance books. They will make you laugh and they will make you feel things and it's just they're so good. I love them so much. I also forget that I read Serious Moonlight by Jen Bennett this year as well, which I believe I read for my Weekend of Romance reading vlog that I did. Again, this was just a really cute rom-com, same as A Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow. We follow two characters who end up falling in love, and, you know, it's a really fun time. Something that I appreciated about this book was that the characters sort of had differing hobbies than you normally see in, like, a, you know, cute rom-com. Um, Birdie, I think that's what her name was, um, is obsessed with true crime and stuff like that, which I guess is not so, you know, absurd to think about nowadays because everybody likes true crime, I feel like. But I don't know, in a rom-com, I feel like that was kind of different. And Daniel, was that his name? Is that is that the guy in this book? Anyway, um, Daniel is what I'm gonna call him. He was really into magic and like magic tricks and stuff. And so, I don't know. I thought they had a really cute dynamic and that's all I'm gonna say. So then I kind of went down this little like spiral where I ended up rereading A Court of Mist and Fury for like the third or fourth time, which <sighs> I'm just not gonna talk about it. It happened and that's all I'm gonna say. I also ended up reading the first half of A Court of Wings and Ruin, but then got kind of bored midway through because I never really, really liked the ending of that series. I'm sorry. So I kind of just like stopped halfway in the middle, but then, then I got A Court of Silver Flames in the mail and was like, well, this is just the sign that I need to start this. So I did and I finished it and it was really good. I liked this story. I did have a couple of issues with it, just personal things that I was just kind of like, eh about, but overall I did enjoy the story and I liked Nesta's sort of character arc throughout the story because I really did not like Nesta going into this and I, you know, appreciated where she started and where she was coming from and where she ended up. And also Cassian, I just, I still love him and I'm just, I want to know what else she's gonna write in this world. I just want to know where else these characters are gonna end up and who Elaine is going to end up with because at this point who the hell knows? <laughs> so around this time was when I started reading the Fence graphic novels. I for some reason got really into graphic novels and comics this year and just decided to, you know, download some from Hoopla, which is a digital library loaning app. And I found the Fence comics and was like, hey, these look familiar and started reading them. And I really liked them. I really wish there were more of them. Uh, but I hope that we get more in the future because the story was just starting to ramp up and get good. So crossing my fingers that we get more at some point. If you haven't read the Fence comics yet, it's literally about fencing. It's about this like all boys boarding school where they just have competitive fencers and fencing competitions and it's great. We follow this one character named Nick who is like the secret son of this fencing prodigy. And then we also follow this guy whose name I can't remember off the top of my head, um, who is a actual fencing prodigy and he's like super cold and Nick is super like, you know, goofy and whatnot. And you can tell there's gonna be some kind of like a slow burn, like enemies to lovers romance there. And uh, I'm so ready for it. 
I love this series so much. And then I read the book that I've probably talked way too much about on my channel already, so I will save you any of the comments on it, and that is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. If you're interested in urban fantasy, found family stories, it's so good. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm gonna stop talking because I've talked about this book way too much on my channel already, and I will spare you any more of it. And around this time as well was also when I started rereading The Last Magician because I was preparing for The Serpent's Curse, which came out a couple weeks ago, I want to say, and I'm currently in the middle of it as I'm recording this video. But I reread this book around the time when I was reading all of those other books, and I really love the series still. I think that the first book is still my favorite because a lot of stuff happens and it's really, you know, action-packed and exciting. The second book, which I'll talk about a little later, is not so high on my, you know, favorites list anymore, but the first book I still really, really, really love. Um, this is like an urban fantasy, historical fiction, heist book. It's got so many different things in it happening that it's so good. We follow this girl named Esta who is a thief and she can, you know, stop time and manipulate time and whatnot. So she ends up time traveling back to 1902 New York to get on this heist, which will get her closer to this book so that she can bring it back to the future and she can stop this big bad organization from, you know, trying to rid the world of magic and magus and stuff like that. It's a really good book. I highly recommend. I keep forgetting that I read these books this year too. I actually started the A Curse So Dark and Lonely series this year, which I loved the first book and really disliked the second book. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling that's following this girl named Harper who has cerebral palsy. She ends up accidentally getting whisked to this kingdom of Emberfall, is that what it's called? And she, it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling, so you can guess what happens from there. Um, obviously the guy who is Prince Wren, who is the beast in this situation. He has been cursed and so every season um, he has to find a girl who will fall in love with him otherwise he turns into this beast and like destroys you know everybody in the vicinity until the season restarts or something. So I thought it was a really fun twist on Beauty and the Beast. I really liked the characters in the first book. I liked the way that the story went. I thought that it was really good and I was really looking forward to the second book. If you've been here and watched my videos where I talk about this you will know that I disliked the second book. Um, I really didn't like where the author took the characters. I thought that a lot of the actions that they took were a bit out of character for them, and I really wish that it had just gone in a different direction, and that I liked the main characters of that book more, and all of the different things that I could go on and on and on about, but I will spare you. Suffice to say, I will not be moving on to the third book, but I had a good time with the first one, so if you're looking for just like a good Beauty and the Beast retelling, I would read the first book and then just like not move on. <laughs> and then I read the series that I probably could have read a million other books rather than reading this entire series, but instead I dedicated my time and like two months of my life to reading the Keeper of the Lost City series. Yeah, I read all these books. Really quickly, so that I don't talk about this for too much, because I feel like so much of my channel recently has been Keeper of the Lost Cities related, and I don't want it to just be about that as much as I do like this series. This is a middle grade series, if you were unaware. It follows a girl named Sophie, who is a telepath. She can read minds, and one day she finds a boy who can do the same, and he lets her know, hey, you're the person we've been looking for. You're an elf. Come back with us to our land, or whatever. And she gets kind of whisked off to this world she didn't know existed, where she, you know, belongs and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. It is a crazy, wild ride. This story goes from being like your, you know, sort of typical cliche, like, you know, chosen one slash she's not like other girl story in this first book to like, oh my Jesus, what is happening? How many plot twists and subplots and different things are happening in this story? How many books can one possibly write in a series? The answer is I don't know, but if anybody knows, it's Shannon Messenger. <laughs> As somebody who enjoys middle grade YA and adult fantasy, I can safely say that um, I was not guessing some of the things that were going to happen in this series. This, Some of the series took me by surprise. Some of it was a pleasant surprise, some of it was a not so pleasant surprise, and I would just recommend to anybody looking for a wild, twisty journey into a new world. It's a lot, but it's fun. Now I have to try to put them all back on the ground without spilling them and dropping them everywhere. Oh my goodness. And then I don't have them here with me right now, but I also, like I mentioned earlier, read the first seven volumes, I believe, of the Demon Slayer manga. I haven't watched the anime yet. I keep meaning to. I just haven't yet. But uh, I really like the manga so far. I think that it's fun and it's an interesting 
intro to manga because I've never really read manga before so um, I can appreciate it for that. It's basically about this guy who is selling coal for his family and he comes back home and finds that his family has all been killed by demons but his sister has not been killed she's just been turned into a demon and so he joins the demon slayer corpse in order to try to find a way to save his sister and bring her back from being a demon and like return her to being a human, if that makes sense. And so then the last two books that I read this year, I will go through really quickly because I did just talk about them in my May wrap up. And those were a reread of The Devil's Thief by Lisa Maxwell, which is book two in the Last Magician series, and The Lost Hero by Rick Riordan, which is book one in the Heroes of Olympus series. These were the only two books that I read in May. They were both rereads for me, and there's not really much that I wanna say about them. I will say that I read The Devil's Thief a lot slower than I had anticipated, which I mentioned in my wrap up as well. It was just a story that was not as action-packed as I remembered and it kind of sort of like dragged a bit in the middle so not my favorite in the series but still I appreciate it for all of the crazy twists that it took and of course The Lost Hero it's always gonna have a place in my heart because of Rick Riordan so there's that. So those were all of the books that I read this year so far and now I'm gonna go through and name you my top five favorites out of all of them. Give me a second so I can like you know create an order out of this and then I will share with you my favorites of the year so far. Ah, no, come back. Okay, so now it's time for my top five favorite books I've read so far in 2021. Drum roll, please. I'm not good at this. Coming in at number five on the leaderboard is Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. I just gotta say, this graphic novel series, it really has a place in my heart, a very special place in my heart, because I really loved it. And because it's a graphic novel series, I can read this like seven times in one day and literally not break a sweat. So I'm all about that. Plus, I think that my excitement for the upcoming Netflix show is just so real and so big that I can't think of anything else when I read this book. So it's really good. I like it. Coming in at number four is actually book number two in the Mistborn trilogy, The Well of Ascension by Brandon Sanderson. This is actually my favorite book in the trilogy, to be honest with you. Um, I feel like I've said this before on my channel, so sorry if I'm reiterating, but usually second books in the series are not my favorite. This one was. I just really liked the direction that the story went in in this book. I feel like we got a couple of different reveals to things that we were, you know, wondering about and, you know, we were we were figuring out exactly what the story was that we didn't realize in the first book when everything went down. Um, I also really love our main characters, Vin and especially Eland in this story. I feel like they each come into their own in a certain way and um, especially their, you know, relationship with one another grows and I just really like it. I really do. Also, I'm not usually a fan of like very heavy politics in books, but this one I liked. I don't, I wouldn't say that it was like super, super heavy, but it was definitely more politics than I'm used to in books. And I really liked it. Coming in at number three might surprise you, but it is Act Your Age Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. For some reason, this one was my favorite in the series. I really don't know why or how or what about it makes it my favorite, but it was. I think there was just something about the characters and how funny they were when they got together and how just like some of the moments in the story were just like literally laughing out loud funny for me. It's a romance story. How can you not be happy reading this? Now these next two books probably will not surprise you. Number two in my top five books so far of the year is The City of Brass by S.A. Chakravorty. I don't think that I can pick a favorite book in this series, so I'm just picking the first one here. I already mentioned this, but the series is wonderful and so good and so captivating and action-packed and all of the things. So I just absolutely love it and I think that everybody should read it and that's all I'm gonna say. Also, if you weren't aware, I recently found out that S.A. Chakravorty is creating a new series. It's based off of, oh my god, uh, the 12th century something with like the Indian Ocean or like Oceana or, oh shoot, I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's based off of a specific period in time and it's following a girl who is a pirate or she used to have a like big reputation as being like a, uh, a, a big pirate or something and she gets sucked back into the world when she gets the chance to like right one of the wrongs of her past and also come across a fabled treasure and so she like you know, collects a, a cast of characters as her crew and goes on this journey or something. It sounds so freaking good. I'm so excited. I think it said that it was pitched as like Ocean's Eleven meets Pirates of the Caribbean or something. And I'm, I'm so ready. I'm so here for this. Please give it to me now. And so number one on my list this year, absolutely no surprise to anyone, 
It's going to be The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. I've got nothing else to say. And so you guys, those were all of the books that I read so far this year and my top five favorites. I'm not sure which videos will go up before this one, but I am currently actually in a reading slump right now. I am doing my absolute best to push through and to continue to read what I'm already in the middle of and to, you know, push forward. But uh, to be honest, it's kind of been dragging me down. So uh, I'm hoping crossing my fingers hoping that I will be able to read more in the coming months. I'm definitely going to be creating a, you know, specific TBR that I'm really excited for that I'll share with you guys soon about what I'm going to be reading, but yeah, I'm just, I'm really crossing my fingers that I will, you know, pick up the pace and start reading some good books so I can start recommending you guys some new reads. But yeah, I'm pretty proud of what I've done so far this year regardless, so. I think that's that. How many books have you guys read so far this year? Do you have like a specific goal in mind? Are you just reading whenever you can? Are you just, you know, happy with whatever you're able to get done? Or are you like going for gold? Or what's going on in your lives, in, in your reading year so far? Let me know in the comments so that we can talk about it and celebrate our accomplishments and urge everybody else forward who might be falling behind. Let's just stick up for one another and you know, be here for all of our reading journeys, no matter how, you know, quick or slow they may take. And thank you so much once again to Karma for sponsoring today's video. Remember to check the link in my description below so that you can download the extension on your computer and the app on your phone. It will save you money. It will give you notifications when things you really want to buy go on sale or the stores that you like have coupons. It is a wonderful thing and I highly recommend getting it just to try it out. But I think that is everything I wanted to say. So if you want to follow me on any of my socials. All my handles are in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you later. Bye!